I feel this is devastating for the country. I really do. I really do. Why, hello! Uh, how the devil are we? Good. We better put that down, haven't we? It's a little bit blustery. Well. Well, well, well. What can one say? What can one say? Obviously, in relation to uh, Thursday evening stroke Friday's revelations. Um, I guess it's a bit like a bereavement at the end of a terminal illness. You know it's coming. You know it's coming. But when it happens, it's still upsetting, isn't it? You can be as ready as you want for it, but when it happens, it happens. Um, so this is obviously a follow-up to the uh, video I did in which I sort of basically told you where I stand on the political front in relation to the current crop of shite that's out there to vote for. Um, we all knew, well, I say we all knew, maybe it was self-prophesizing. Uh, we were all told it was going to be a sweeping Labour victory. Fuck it, let's go this way. Let's go this way. You know, we were told from the minute the election was called, basically. We were told from before the election was called. So my initial visceral reaction is... Fuck. Okay, there's no dressing it up. It's just... Fuck. As far as reform goes, they did very well. They did very well. Um, now, as sad as I am, I actually did compile many... I, I compiled the turnouts, the vote sharing percentages, the number of voters that, that turned out, so the percentage and the actual number of total votes cast, the total votes cast for each of the three main parties um, since 1997. The only one I skipped, I think, was 2001. Um, and then obviously for 2024, I included reform. Um, I could have included UKIP for one of the previous ones. Uh, I think there was a UKIP, there was a Brexit party as well at some point. But uh, anyway. And I did that because... As I will, I will show you, I will interject and show you uh, stuff that, it's not stuff that you don't already know. You know, the media have touched on it. As an interjection, as I was saying, um, as sad as I am, I thought it'd be interesting for my own um, amusement.
to collate some of the figures from the previous general elections. Um, notably absent is 2001, um, or, or between 97 and, and 2010, I didn't, didn't bother. Um, so what we have here are the, obviously the top three main parties by each general election and you can see uh, how many votes they, they had, how many seats they won and the uh, percentage of the popular vote they won. Um, so 13 and a half million was equivalent to 43.2% of all those who turned out to vote, which is seen here. Uh, so we have the turnout figure in the number of, the number of people who actually voted uh, and the 71.3% is the number of people who, who voted who were eligible to. So we can look at Tony Blair's original landslide, New Labour, 1997. John Major's government was in, in turmoil. Um, Thatcher had gone. Things weren't going well. Tories got an absolute kicking. Uh, Labour had 43.2% of the popular vote. On a turnout of 71%, pretty, pretty damn good. Uh, 418 seats. Uh, they were then in power um, for, a, for a good three terms, I think it was nearly. Um, so we can come on to 2010. 2010. Um, I think that was the time of the Conservative Liberal Democrat coalition government. So you can see turnout was down. Down to 29.6 million people who voted. Uh, Labour only got 29% of the popular vote. The Tories had 36 with a 306 seats in Parliament, but it wasn't enough. I think they needed 330 to gain a majority to, to govern. So they did a deal with the Liberal Democrats. So we have the Liberal Democrats on 6.8 million votes, 23% of the vote, 57 seats. 2015, slightly higher turnout. Labour stuck on 30% of the uh, of the vote. Tories on 36% of the vote. Now, what happened here was the Liberal Democrat vote collapsed, um, which meant that the Tories won more seats, which means they had a small majority. So Liberal Democrats, dreadful performance, two and a half million votes, just under two and a half million votes, eight seats. 2019, Jeremy Corbyn, right? Keir Starmer, I'm, I'm all for Corbyn. He's a close friend of, or he's a friend of mine. I consider him a friend. Uh, he'd make an excellent prime minister. Labour, 10.2 million votes, 32% of the popular vote, 202 seats. Liberal Democrats, 3.6, nearly 3.7 million votes. 11% of the vote share, 11 seats. Obviously, we had a Boris Johnson bounce, uh, gave them an 80-seat majority. 43% of the popular vote went to the Conservatives. So now we come to 2024, this year. Look at this, Labour, 9.6 million votes less than that of the Corbyn era. Slightly more of the popular vote though, only just. Tories got an absolute drubbing, okay? Not because more people not because more people came out to vote for Labour, less people voted for Conservative. 121 seats, 23%. Liberal Democrats, 3.5 million votes, right? 3.5 million votes which is only 200,000 votes less than 2019, where they got 11 seats, and yet they ended up with 71 seats. 71. We had reform in. Four million votes. Four seats. Now actually five seats. Um, or to change that, which I think puts them close to 15% of the popular vote. So... This general election has been problematic. Look at that, a 60% turnout, 
1.9 million people decided to vote. Only 60% of those eligible to vote. The lowest since, I believe, 2001, when there was uh, just under 59%. I think this is actually closer to 59% than 60 but, you know, splitting hairs. So there will be calls now, possibly, or there'll be discussions of proportional representation. Um, and what, I, what, what irritates me are people like Ed Davey, who say, you know, the people have spoken, thank you, blah, 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 71 seats. Yeah, but, yes, but, 3.4 million, 3.5 million votes, your second worst turnout in all of these elections, your second worst turnout, and yet your highest ever seat gain. So, Labour did not have, although, you see, it's all semantics, isn't it? Yes, Labour had a landslide victory. In that the number of seats they won was pretty, pretty significant. Uh, 412, I think it is, is it? Still less than Tony Blair won in 97. But there's some really, really significant points to all of this. Uh, one, turnout was uh, nearly an all-time record low. I think, I think 2001 was slightly worse, only very slightly. But for this election just gone, 2024, only 59 point whatever it is, 59.8 or 59.18% of the people eligible to vote did vote. Now, some of those, but a very small percentage, I'd imagine, some of those would have been uh, postal ballots, which they didn't receive in time or that have got lost in the post. But let's just ignore that bit of it. So that's the first concerning thing. Now, in contrast, you see, look at this. It's not the cows I mind, it's the fact that I cleaned the bike thoroughly. I ummed and nude and mooed about bringing it out. I know, it's silly, isn't it? Um, anyway, back on, on topic. So, a turnout of 59%, which is staggeringly bad, staggeringly bad. And the problem, the problem with a low turnout is that it distorts it distorts the results very, very badly. Labour have managed to win nearly on the same scale as Tony Blair did, right? Now, when Tony Blair came to power, there was a 71% turnout, I think it was. 71%, which is pretty good. Uh, Keir Starmer's Labour Party got less votes this year, in this election, than Jeremy Corbyn's Labour Party got in 2019, right? So that's the first thing to take away from this. The next thing that you can take away from that is that there was not a huge swing to Labour. All right, more people did not decide to vote Labour. If anything, less people decided to vote Labour. What did happen is that people who would normally vote Conservative decided to split their, their votes four ways. One, not bothering to vote at all. Two, uh, voting for reform. Three, voting for the Liberal Democrats 
and four, some of them will have voted Labour. Um, so we now have a government with a huge majority that is only representative of 25% of the electorate. Um, which I'm sure anyone, anyone that has a rational thought in their head would conclude that that seems undemocratic, unrepresentative. But again, it's because so few people decided to turn out and vote in the first instance, and of those that did, it was your usual votes for Labour. The Tory ones that did bother went to reform, etc., as I've just said. Um, now, there will be lots of talk about switching to proportional representation. And yes, we did have a referendum in 2011 on electoral reform, but neither of those options were for PR. Um, one of them was to do with an alternative voting system, you know, or a transferable vote or an alternative vote. Uh, I can't remember what the other one was. Uh, and the country said no. Now, I'm very conflicted. Very conflicted. On the notion of... Uh, proportional representation. I don't like it. I don't like it because in a system of proportional representation, unless you have more than 50% of the vote share, Okay, you can never govern effectively. You can never govern effectively unless somehow your your share of the vote is split with an alternative version of your politics. So that's what I don't like about proportional representation. It leads to weak government. It leads to never-ending wrangling. It leads to just endless, endless consultation of trying to form coalitions. And when they do form a coalition, you know, the governing party, if you like, is held to ransom by the smaller party that is supporting it and propping it up. And you end up having to just continually compromise on everything. Oh, you got to be fucking joking me. Okay. Okay. Uh, I've got to go that way. Have I? I don't know. I should know. <laughs> Um, oh shit, which way am I going to go? We go this way. Um, right, so where was I? Oh yeah, I was whinging, wasn't I? As somebody who left a kind comment said, well, really, not being funny, but I don't know what your channel's about. If I had to recommend it to somebody, I don't know what I'd tell them. You're just a bloke whinging on a motorbike. Well, yeah, that's about it, really. Thank you. That's about right. I feel this is devastating for the country. 
I really do. I really do. Uh, Thursday night. Thursday night is probably the first election, general election, that I've not at least stayed up to. To the point where they've called it. Uh, I saw the first two results come in and went to bed. Incidentally, <laughs> you, you can s the media, the media are so lopsided and anyone who disagrees is insane. Is insane or is obviously on that side of the debate. Anyone who saw the Sky News reveal of the exit polls, there is no denying that uh, the woman in the background actually had an orgasm. Literally, she had an orgasm live on television when they revealed the exit poll. Um, because generally exit polls are very accurate. Um, but I digress. So why do I think this is bad for the country? And not just bad for the country, but potentially uh, devastating. One, as I've said before, I, I really, honest to God, do not believe for a second that even half of the people who voted Labour, especially the swing voters, um, the swing voters and the loyalist voters who vote Labour out of principle because they've been brought up to despise Tory wealth, they really do not understand what New Labour was and what what's been dubbed Labour Change is. Labour Change is the continuation of Tony Blair's New Labour project. Uh, the people behind the scenes, the people at the front, they're lawyers, they're professionals. They know what they are doing. They know what their plan is. They will tear up or finish tearing up they will they will take the pieces of the constitution that we used to have that tony blair tore into shreds and they will burn them new labor new labor instigated brought into being the supreme court which is a contradictory power under our constitution. In UK politics, the Houses of Parliament have supremacy, okay? They are the legislature. They, they make the law, they pass the law, okay? Tony Blair and Gordon Brown And Charlie Lord Falconer tore that up and put in a Supreme Court. So you now have a Supreme Court which, which rules over the supremacy of Parliament. Now the whole point of the supremacy of Parliament is that it is answerable to the voter, to you and I, the constituents. And that is no longer the case. They broke up the UK by installing regional assemblies. Which has forever broken the bonds of what was the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. They passed the Equality Act and the Human Rights 
stuff. Again, this is all nice sounding fluffy stuff until you realise what it actually empowers people to do. It's like giving a psychopath a gun under the pretense of self-defence without realising that they can then use that weapon to go and murder people. I suspect some of the first legislation that we will see in regards to all of this is likely to be um, Islamophobia laws as well as other hate crimes. which will completely shut down the ability for anybody to discuss their concerns about mass uncontrolled immigration, whether it be legal or illegal. So, in a nutshell, I shall sum up my thoughts of what happened as fuck. And on that note, I shall say toodaloo.